Hi Plus Tube. Welcome to my channel, Crafty Cat Stitcher. My name is Kathy and this is a channel about cross stitch. For the most part, once in a while we'll see something else. Um, but it's all craft related and um, I don't, I don't want to say everything's going to be cross stitch related but um, craft related. So if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. I appreciate your subscriptions and your likes and comments. And if this is your first time here, I hope you find something that you like. Uh, if you see something fun or interesting or just enjoy spending some time uh, watching this, I appreciate it. Consider, please consider uh, pressing the subscribe button and a like and, a and make a comment or two. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I welcome all of them. So um, today is Sunday. And it's October 24th, 2021. And we are firmly into fall. Uh, I think we just have a couple more days of warm weather here. And suddenly it's going to turn into real fall weather, which is really welcome um, because I like the seasons. I like when, when it's time for a new season, I'm ready for it. Even though I am a warm weather person, I really like warm weather. Um, it's just time for fall. So bring it on, right? <laughs> Um, I want to go ahead and do a real quick life update because I do, oh, I do have some news, but let me say first of all, and I want to thank everybody who made, um, kind comments after my last video about Moxie. Um, we lost our cat in case you didn't know. And I, I had so many kind and comforting things said um in the comments and i appreciate each and every one so um thank you for that i appreciate it um and that goes right into my news so after a couple of weeks of not having any cats in the house which is really strange for us because we've had cats for the past i want to say 32 years we've had anywhere from one to three cats and um we decided we wanted a cat so we went to a, a local adoption event and we we found one first one we saw and the, the lady that was working at the event it's from the feral cat program of georgia and um she said this is the cat for you just this is going to be perfect and she was right. Um, she's a little, t mostly tabby, brown tabby stripe. And she's got some other little interesting markings on her. And she's a year and a half. She's full of energy. She's playing with toys that have not been played with in years. Because, you know, when you have older cats, they just kind of, eh. <laughs> I don't play with those toys anymore. So... Um, we're getting used to a life with a little one. She, you know, a year and a half, she's out of kittenhood, but still has a ton of energy. And she's a toy destroyer. Her name is Rigby. Her name, full name is Eleanor Rigby, and we call her Rigby. So that is my news. And she may come in. She likes to jump on the table that's in front of me. So it could happen. And if not, I'll post a picture. How about right here? So, um, we'll just see what happens with the video, and if not, you'll see the picture right here. All right, let's move on to whips. Let's move on the cross stitch, which is why you're here, right? So, um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, and if, even if you haven't, I'll tell you what's going on. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I decided that I had about 21, 22 <clears throat> whips. And for me, that's a lot. And I was starting to feel a little weird about it because I wasn't getting a whole lot done. So what I decided to do was I decided to pick six of the whips that I really wanted to get finished this year. And just work on those and that's it and once in a while I brought in one of my other ones just for variety um, and I did pretty well I've been so bad about keeping records I don't know how many I finished but I I did get some finishes using that method 
And so I had like a, a rotation of six. And as soon as I finished one, I'd bring another one in. And I've tried not to start new things, but you know how that goes. I know you do. Um, so um, recently I found out about Whips Be Gone. It's hashtags Whips, B-E-G-O-N-E, two zero two one whoops be gone 2021 and the whole idea of it was to take the last 100 days of the year and get some of your whips done and i thought okay this is for me i'm doing this it's so motivational <clears throat> so i chose two to start with <clears throat> to get finished in the first quarter and um, one of them was Barry Hart. It's UB Design. It's really, it's Baron Hers in Winter. And I don't speak, I believe this is German. Um, but I was just doing this portion of it, which is the heart. So I chose that as one of them. And... What do you know? I got it done. I'm going to hold that up like this. What do you think? Look at I got it done. Um, this is kind of a big, it was a big project for me. It is kind of big and it has lots of shading in it, which made it sort of a challenge. But um, toward the end when I was working, coming down here, I figured out a method that made made it go a lot quicker and it's funny that it took me that long to figure it out but that's how it is right so um i stitched this in 28 count sandcastle jobelin and um it's done and i think it turned out so good i think i'm gonna frame it i mean it is big enough and um i don't know i don't know Maybe I'll have a frame made and I'll just do the framing myself. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. Unless I find something, I magically find something that will work. So I got one done. So I was able to say, you know what? I got, I got one done. <laughs> so which is really great for my whips be gone. Um, the other one that I said that I wanted to finish was... Um, vintage angel because it's a it's going to be a gift and i did not get that one done in the first quarter the first quarter ended like last monday and um so we start we're well into the second quarter now so what i did was i filled out my sheet and it looks like this and i filled out i want to get cattle lantern done vintage angel and turkey bay i just added this one in randomly um, because it would be really nice. And so I, I also said it in quarter two, I plan to finish two projects. I, you know, it's possible I could get Turkey Bay done, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this is what the sheet looks like. You can download it. People um, post these on Instagram. And I'll put the hashtag in the information below. This is um, a project that's organized by the Devoted Quilter. And she's Devoted Quilter on um, Instagram, and she has a blog. So um, I did that, and um, I, first of all, I'm going to show you Vintage Angel. This is in the 2020 Christmas, um, Christmas ornament issue, and there she is. I've seen this made up several times. And I really liked it, and I decided it, it, it was going to be a gift for my son and daughter-in-law for their annual Christmas ornament that I love to make for them. And there she is. And <laughs> get this. I'm almost done. I'm almost done with her. All I have are her shoes. That's it. Unless I find something else that I missed. And, you know, before... I don't know how you do it, but when I think I'm finished with something, I go over it really well just to make sure that I got all the stitching in. Because you never know, you might leave something out. I, I don't know, I've done it before, so it happens. 
I worked on this a lot last night during the um, National League Championship Series. And there she is. So anyway, um, that's her. I love it. I'm using all the called for flosses. It's all DMC. And the fabric is 40 count um, color and cotton desert taupe. And I think she's beautiful. And I'm going to finish her in the circle, like in the magazine, because I really like that. And um, I'm a little nervous about that because I've never finished a circle or a knit before. But let's see what happens. <laughs> so the other one I was going to work on was um, Cattle Lantern by Luminous Fiber Arts. And that was originally, let me look. Oh, just cross stitch Halloween 2020. Now it's out as a chart. And you're not going to believe this. I got it done. There it is. Yes, I switched up colors. I switched up a lot of colors in this. But, and, it, and it's a lot more, I think it's a lot more vivid than original the charted colors i think it's more in your face i know that that's weak style work squash which i think is a great color i use some victorian motto in the pumpkin so these are it's reflected in here and it's a lot it's it is a, a bright version of it, a really bright version of it but i like the fabric it's um oh I want to say it's called Harvest Moon. It's a 32 count Joblin or Lugana by um, Under the Sea Fabrics. And I love it. So I got to figure out how to finish it. I was kind of thinking of doing a um, flat foam. Maybe. Possibly. I think it'll look good like that. I'm not going to get it done by, ne by next week, by Halloween. Mm -hmm. But for next Halloween, it would be really nice to have, right? So, um, my third project. So, now, uh-oh, what is this? Oh, okay, never mind. Um, so, my third project that I have for Whips Be Gone. So, that was, okay, so, Cattle Lantern, done. Um, Vintage Angel, almost done. So, now I can go ahead and I can finish up my Angel and then work on Turkey Bay. That's what it looks like. It's by Plum Street Samplers. And it's so cute. I saw this um, at Dying the Stitch. I visit. I was so lucky to visit them once. And um, it was on the wall. And it was stitched on teeny, just like over, I believe it's, it was over one on 25 count. And I said, I need to stitch that just like that. So I'm, I am actually using, I think this is 20 count over one. But I'm using two threads, and it is puffy. It is kind of dense stitching, but I like it. So I'm not quite half done. I mean, probably like a third of the way done with it. I don't know if I'll get it done. I think the, the second quarter of Whip Be Gone, Whips Be Gone, is it Whips Be Gone? Yeah, Whips Be Gone. I think it ends at like in November 12th or thereabouts so I don't know if I'll get it done but it would be really nice to you know it'd be nice to have a lot more done and the other thing that's good is that I can bring in another project of my choosing just to, for fun it's something that I just feel like working on so you know that's what makes it fun we have to we have to do things to keep it interesting and fun right that's what I think so I'm so happy about getting having some finishes and um, just getting things finished because that allows me to start new things. Okay. <laughs> I've been watching some floss too. And um, I, I think that, I hope that this is an interesting portion of my videos for you because you're here watching me. So you, pro I, I assume that you like watching floss too in general. And, um, I watched some new, two new ones um, in the past couple weeks, and the first one is Penny's Daughter Shares, 
and her name is Michelle and I've seen her on Instagram a lot and then when I saw that she had a video out I watched it then I realized she's like six of them now so I'm a little bit behind the times with that and um but she's just she just has all the stitching she stitches a lot and she's got so many finishes and it's one of those videos where you see, you can you get the opportunity to see all kinds of projects which is to me really interesting because it kind of gives me ideas of what you know what I like a lot of the things I stitch is are things that I've seen on other people's videos that I liked I don't stitch things just because everybody's stitching them but you know certain things catch your eye and a lot of things on her videos or video did I only watched number one so I've got a lot of catching up to do. So Penny's Daughter Shares. Second one is Mr. Hollix. And if you, we all want to get enthusiastic about cross-stitching. And I like to see enthusiastic people about when talking about their cross-stitch. That's fun for me. And he's, I think, got one video out. And he's so enthusiastic about cross-stitch. It's, it just makes it so much fun, you know. And so it's like, I hope he makes a vi another video soon to see what he's up to. His name is Sean. I believe Sean Hollix. Sean Hollick. I will put the, all that information below. The other thing that I um, just discovered are designers' videos. And I watched Judy at JBW Designs Cross Stitch. And it's so interesting to see um, a designer's perspective. When it comes to cross stitch and she shows a lot and she's doing some research on a old sampler that she has and it's just all interesting and she's just so nice so um do you watch any designer videos any floss tube videos by cross stitch designers and i know that i watched misty at luminous fiber arts she's probably the first one but there are more there are more out there and I, I knew this, but it's just a matter of getting that time to sit down and find them and watch them. So um, if you have a favorite, let me know. So um, JBW, JBW Designs Cross Stitch. So take a look. All right. I got some happy mail and I probably got this one a long time ago and I never showed it. Um, you know who you are. It's so appreciated. Which is another one that I got. These are for some giveaways that I did. And that's that's so nice to get a little thank you in the mail. It's not necessary, but it's so nice. The other thing that is so nice to get is a card from Jackie at Cross My Stitches. Every time I see something from her, I go, oh, I'm going to get a work of art. And she does the most beautiful cards. And the, all the little tiny touches that she puts on them. Look, isn't that beautiful? It's just a beautiful autumn card. And even on the inside, she put a nice little touch, a little leaf cut out. Isn't that beautiful? So thank you, Jackie. And um, I, it's just so nice. And I, I keep my cards. And I put them up in my, um, my little, um, it's a bulletin board thing. <laughs> so that's what I got. Um, I didn't buy too much uh, in the way of new stuff this time. Um, I did go to Michael's. Joanne's, okay, there's been a lot of talk about this, Anchor Plus. On spools and everybody talks about the black and white anchor floss being um, a nice having a nicer um, effect and easier to stitch with and um, better coverage so I decided I was gonna try it I went to um, first I went to Joann's thinking oh yeah they'll have it nothing we have our Joann's that's closest to me is so tiny it's probably the tiniest Joann's exists you know the store model and they had none so then I went to Michael's and they had a small 
selection. And I got, these are the last two of the black and white. So they're obviously in um, demand. So I'll try them. I'll see what I think and incorporate them into a project and see what I think. So, and um, the other thing that I got recently was from Homestead Needleworks. Um, I've been wanting to start um, Autumn Sampler Autumn Alphabet by um, Scarlet House. And I've had the pattern for a long time. And I, but I, I think that it just needs to go on one of these little boards. So if you haven't ordered anything from there, from um, Homestead Needleworks, April Taylor, um, they have all kinds. They have all kinds of little things, and they make these. And this one's so pretty. It's got kind of like a crackly finish. So it just makes me kind of want to stop that. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, it's, and that's a cute little pattern. I don't have it with me at the moment, but, um, yeah. So, I will put the information for them below it as well. Okay. All right. So, um, I am going to do something right now, um, because I don't want to get I don't want my video to cut off, so I'm going to go ahead and start a new one and glue them together. Edit them together. Okay, one moment. Okay, so let's go on to FFOs. I have FFOs. I know. Can you believe it? That was last time I said my plans were to try to finish some FFO some things. So I started off with um, the Holiday Cheer series by Sugar Sugar Stitches. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Let me see if I have it. I don't want to say wrong things, you know. Oh, I do have it. Yep. Sugar Stitches and it's Holiday Cheer series. series. This is chart one, and this is what it looks like. You can get these on Etsy. I believe there's... 12, 10 or 12, I don't know, but that's what that looks like. And so I stitched it on the call for fabric with the call for threads. They're all DMC. The fabric is gingerbread Belfast linen, and it is so pretty. You know, I think I got the um, gingerbread um, even weave, but there's my, <laughs> there's my finish. FFO, yay! So there it is. I love this fabric, gingerbread. It is so pretty. Her choice of colors in this is so cool. You know, there's no red. It's all pinks, pinks and greens, whites. There's a teeny bit of a reddish, like a darker reddish pink, pinkish red. If you notice, I didn't write holiday cheer. I just added two more snowflakes that I found. Found some free charts on the internet and I used those. Got a little polka dot back in that kind of green, the pretty green that they have. And I used um, some mini pom poms and I used um, Lindy Stitch's video on how to um, remove the pom-poms from the little it's on sort of like a little um like a little strip and if you wanted to sew it into here with the machine you'd put that strip on the inside it's complicated so she shows how to remove the pom-poms some of them you can some you can't i was lucky the ones that i have um were easily removed it just took a little while and you just cut it very carefully. I'll put the link to her video below um, and I would recommend that you watch it if you want to do that. She has excellent instructions on how to sew these on and I will not use any other method for sewing on pom-poms. Now 
Granted, my pom-poms are more like little cotton balls. I don't know why. Where did I get these? <laughs> I don't know. They're cute. And it works. It's what I, you know, it's what I wanted, but it's not those really nice. <laughs> Maybe these are just the ultra minis and that's how they are. That, I'm serious. They're like little, little cotton balls and they can get distorted really easily. <laughs> but anyway, I want to start the next one. I have all, I think I have all of them. Um, so, and I have more fabric, so I can actually do a little start, which will be fun. So, can you believe it? I have finishes and they're FFOs. Finishes and FFOs all in one video. My next FFO is the Farmhouse series by Little House Needleworks. And this one, I don't know which one this is, but it's adorable. Isn't that cute? The fabric is 30 count portobello. I got this as a, as a, it was, it was a, um, like a subscription. So we got all the threads. It's a combination of DMC and overdyes and, um, the fabric, which is a 30 count portobello linen. There it is. A little bit of gingham on the back. I use this jute kind of ribbon. I like my bow and some rusty jingle bells. Now let's talk about the edging. It's just sort of like a, a twine kind of edging and I glued it and I don't remember what I did with the other one. I know I, I finished another one like this and I don't remember if I glued it or sewed it. It just seemed like really would be hard to sew on. I don't know. So I um, did some gluing and I don't know. It's just not, it's not perfect. It's not wonderful, but it's okay. I didn't put a hanger on these because um, these are not going to hang on my tree. They are way too big and my tree is way too small. I got a skinny tree and I love it, but this isn't get this. Mm -mm. I put these in a, um, I've got a wooden tray that I put these in. So that's the first one that I did. This is like an almost FFO, same thing. Um, except I have not put jingle bells on it. It's just adorable though. I really like this one because it has a red truck. And uh, some of you might know we used to have a red truck. So um, there it is. Again, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I, I I don't know. Do you what do you do with your trim like this? Do you glue it on or do you sew it? I don't know. But happy with it in general. I like it. In these, like I said, these go in a tray. So I am happy with this. So so what are my plans? Um, I plan to finish. My angel. I mean, I could go, I'll do that this afternoon. I'll take it and sit down and stitch and um, get her done. And then just kind of work on Turkey Bay a little bit, maybe some other things, maybe bring in a couple other projects to work on and um, think about what I want to do for the next quarter, even though this one just barely started. So, and 25 days. So, um, what else? That probably is it. I have a few things on order that I've been wanting. And um, that is, that's probably it for stitching. Um, I want to give you a shop update. If you are, don't want to see that, I save that, always save it to the end. Um, some of you might know that I have a, a Etsy store called Crafty Cat Stitcher. And I make accessories for cross stitchers. And um, I, one thing I like to make are thread keeps. So if you don't want to see this, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. And if you want to just see, see what I've got, um, thank you for staying with me and just taking a look and seeing what I have. So uh, I have little thread keeps. This one's a little Christmas. 
just a little vintage Santa and Mrs. Claus. I always put a little extra charm on them and some beads. The good thing about them is that if you really want to, you can open up the ring and remove this and you could put this on a key ring. You know, you don't really need to use it for thread keep if you don't want to or, or if you know somebody who would love this on a key ring. You know, you can get key rings really cheap and just switch it out. So, um, but for, for stitchers that like to organize our floss on a thread keep, I've got different designs. I'm showing some, I think, um, these two are, yeah, the, that one and this one, Christmas. This one's look really pretty. It's Holly. And there's a little charm. A little, it's a wreath. And there's a little beaded charm. Okay. And then um, in the bronze color, this one is a floral. And again, I've got a little, this one is a butterfly charm. And a little bead. Yeah, same thing with this. If you, if this is something you think somebody would like as a gift and you want to make a key ring out of it, you know, so. I also have, oh, I've got some new needle minders. Limited quantities. I've got a couple of these. That's, let's see if I can get that in there really good. I think that's really pretty. And then these little, they're just little rhinestones. And they're really good. I mean, I'm going to get a needle and I'll show you really quick how good these are. So, I mean, that needle is on there really strong. It's not going anywhere. So I've got those. I've got some um, scissor fobs. This one's one of my favorites. It's a little Christmas scissor fob and it has a Christmas tree on the bottom and a peppermint bead. I always put a nice big clasp on it so it'll fit on your scissors. Here's another one that I made. This is like a one of a kind because it has vintage uh, crystal beads. They're Aurora Borealis. So I've got those. And I have still have a few left of scissor holders. These are my little bee skip ones. It has a little bee charm. Scissors not included, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. This one, I don't know what kind of wood this is. Cypress? It could be cypress. So they're all unique. They're all made by hand. There's no two are alike. See, and they have different kinds of shading and some of them have little, I mean, there's one that has like a little thing that looks like a crack. It's not, it's just part of the wood. So it's just fun, just fun stuff if you're interested. And so thank you for looking at that. We did not get a, a visit from Rigby during this video. So I'm thinking I'll probably, I'll get a picture and I'll put that in here for you. Um, so that you can see her and she's just adorable but I have a funny feeling yet you will be seeing her in future videos because like I said she likes to come up on this table and visit me so um but that's about it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it I hope that you come back and see me and um leave some comments and um it just get your stitching in and stitch what you love and that's the important thing so I will see you in a few weeks bye